get it. I don't want it. When I got married a year ago, I had no idea what I was getting into. I grew up in the city, but I married a girl from small town southern Oklahoma, so her family is really country to me. Not only that, after spending some time with them, I realized this family isn't normal. I just needed someone else to witness this, so I picked up a camera. Meet the Harris family. There's Daniel and Michelle, their firstborn daughter, Allie. Then there's me, Armstrong, her husband. Next, there's Caroline and her husband, Caleb. Then there's Jonathan. And finally, there's Benjamin. So that's the family. They have fun wherever they are, give everything 110%, and always stay true to their roots. This is Hicks in Paradise. Mom has bees, so now that it's late summer, it's time to go harvest the honey. Usually, harvesting the honey is a family ordeal, and it's just something fun for us all to do together. So Michelle told me that she was going to go collect honey from her beehive, and I wanted to go along and film her and see how that whole process happens. I only had two suits. One was an adult and one was a kid. And because I'm taller, she let me have the adult, which put her in the kid, but the problem is the kid's suit is not a good suit at all. It did not fit. It was so tight, and I ended up getting a hole. Oh, that's a so you don't have a hole now, and that one's a little bit better. I kind of like being in there. It's kind of, you feel kind of it's like it's a little bit dangerous with all them swimming around you. These are kind of aggressive bees. We're going a little bit later, so hopefully they'll be a little bit. Sure. They're going to get mad. I'm going to like this. And so Armstrong and my mom go up to the top of this hill to harvest the honey. Mom tries to smoke the bees out, but the problem is that these bees are pretty aggressive and they've never really responded to smoking very well. See, they can feel the vibration of this thing. They're already mad. Because there's a lot of like wind and rain and all that kind of stuff. The actual house for the bees is pretty heavy, which keeps them safe. But the problem is, is that when my mom goes and tries to open it, she kind of needs like either a crowbar or a hammer to get it open. And my mom couldn't find her crowbar for some reason. So she's hammering the lid of this beehive and it is making the already aggressive bees even more mad. As this is happening, she's letting out these little yelps. She's really getting in there, like trying to get the lid off the beehive. And then all of a sudden, she realizes there are multiple bees getting inside of her suit. There was a quick getaway. <laughs> Once I realized there were bees getting in the suit. Yeah. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Hurry up, <laughs> and I knew I already had multiple bees inside the suit with me. Like running like a crazy person. It was scary. I mean, the first thing I want to do is make sure she's not going to have allergic reaction to that many stings. I can feel them in there, and it's like stinging, 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 and I was like, but yet they're all swarming around me, so it's not like I could take it all. Those bees have always been mean. She's really tough, and those those bee stings were hurting. And she came back to the back and. Benjamin and I were helping her pick stingers out. Never been stung this much. I'm not using that little kid one again. But she is like the toughest person. So she actually was okay and just um, laughing it off. I mean, I think she had at least 30, maybe 50 stings. That's a very good honey. She puts on the adult suit this time and with oh, extra padding okay. and goes back out. Mama Harris is tough. She's a country girl and she wanted that honey, so she went right back up that mountain.
I'd been working for dad to get some money. So Ben's out there raking, I guess. Sure enough, finds a copperhead. Luckily, I've never seen a rattlesnake out here. Only copperheads. Well, I'm glad you didn't get bit. Yeah, they're probably not deadly, but they can sure hurt you bad. I didn't even know there was a copperhead in that bush, like, at all. So Ben, what were you doing, bud? I kicked with my boot just through some leaves. The copperhead just flies out. Just cleaning up this dead bush and then there he was. Yeah. So we go out there and I shoot the copperhead with the 22. The 22 is like a little bullet, but it's still a powerful bullet. Obliterate the copperhead. The head's blown to bits. But Daniel comes along in his house loafers and sweatpants in the 100 degree weather, recovering from something. So I think it was the day after I had kidney stone surgery. <laughs> Just feels like he needs to grab this thing by the tail and Indiana Jones it into the ground. Because that needed to happen. It had just kind of been shot in the neck, so its head was kind of still working, but it couldn't really move. There was a bullet hole in its neck and a bullet hole in its head. And I really don't think that that thing was still having some brain activity going on. One day after surgery. Pretty good one. I think Dad just wanted to, like, Hulk smash it on the ground. And I've done that with snakes a bunch of times before. Yeah, that's hat band material. Anybody want it? Yeah, I was kind of still a little bit loopy that day. <laughs> Be careful this time of year working around brush and dead, dead stuff. Hang him up in the tree. So you just gotta be careful about brush piles. That's where they like to hide, you know? Watch before you go sticking your hand in there. And that's kind of where that snake was. It was under some old sticks and leaves. You gotta be careful. Sometimes in a marriage, you just follow order. Don't scratch the floor. The new rug's going here, and then this one's going out there. The other one in there is going out there. And the other, there's four rugs that need to be moved. And then there's a high likelihood they'll all go back to where they are now. Oftentimes, mom will get a new piece of furniture for the house, and sometimes she'll have no intention of keeping. I will take a picture for her, and I'll Photoshop the rug in place. <laughs> It's easier than that. Me and dad knew that the possibility of this rug actually staying there were super low. You gotta embrace it, man. Wait, we tried this one yesterday. What? We tried this one yesterday. It Where? has to be another one. Where? This one, here. You already did this yesterday? You no. Put this back? Mom! We didn't we look at this rug yesterday? Yeah. So why are we putting it here? That's where it goes. So it's not gonna be moved back later. No, right not this rug. This is going to look good, don't you think? Mm -hmm. All right, Michelle. I think I'm going to like it. I know you do like it. I do too. Well, I liked this rug here, but it's too small, I think, for right here. Why? I like it. You're just saying that because... Don't you like it? It's pretty good. It's awesome. It's awesome. So I was thinking about putting that other rug in here. No. Otherwise, it's too big. Sometimes Michelle needs to see a thing to make a decision about a thing. Just bring it in here and let me look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just lay it right there and let me just see it. Like that. Just leave this here for just a day and let me look, live with it. Hey, Daniel, I do want to measure this gray mat and see if it'll fit under that rug. It will, it just won't be. Hey, John. What? We get to take the gray mat out from under this rug and go put it under the rug we just put down. <laughs> now? I mean, you know, because if we don't, every time I walk over that rug, I'm going to go, dang, there's not a pad under this rug. Did you measure it and see how it's going to fit? So I'm sure it's close. Really? The amount of times we've changed the rug in the kitchen is ridiculous. Yeah, it's better. It's better just not to argue. You just put it there. You like it. Then. And then if she doesn't like it, you just move it back. And you don't complain. Because it's just better that way. Yeah, well, I... Hey, I'm telling you, this rug's going to look so much better with that pad under it. It's going to be freaking designer. <laughs> now it pops. 
Now it pops, man. Better get it right or you're gonna redo it. It was really helpful with them, and they, honestly, all in all, we're so sweet about it. Now this rug looks like trash. I mean, this one's so awesome. And really just we're happy to help mom do something. Sometimes it's funny to act like it's a big deal or it's a hard thing, but I mean, who cares? It takes 10 minutes to move some furniture around and make your wife happy. Get happy, you know? <laughs> So we have the honey now, now it's time to harvest. Yeah, this is so good. Nice. I know. This is a centrifuge. We get all the honey out of the combs. We're gonna have to lick it. It's really cool. You spin and spin and spin. It smells so good. And you also have to open up, like almost like scrape it. I don't know either so that the honey is free and it just comes out and you collect honey. Oh, this it all collects in the bottom of this barrel that we have with a little spout. And so we're able to put it in our buckets and what you have to do in order to get the clean honey is strain it through some mesh nets. You get a lot of it out. And I think I got just out of one box, would you say about two gallons of honey? Yeah. Yeah, see, look, Michelle, look at all that honey. Look at how much honey's left in that. I know, we just have to keep spinning. I saw how slow the honey spinning was going, and I just, you know, always looking for a way to do something easier. So if I can make it go slow. You have to hand crank the centrifuge, but Daniel decided that that was taking too long. And so he went off and got a drill and rigged the system to have the drill go. You can lose an electric drill to power a lot of stuff if you think about it. We're spinning now. <laughs> it turns out it was just didn't really make it easier. It was it was fun to try. The crazy thing is how much better it is than the honey you buy at the store because it hasn't been processed and all that. I mean, it's just like it tastes good. It's gonna be good. We got a lot of honey. There was so much honey to harvest that it actually took us hours that night. So we were up late, but it was great. It was Armstrong and I and my mom and dad. And so we had a really good time just chatting and um, centrifuging the honey. That honey is pure gold. I paid for that honey with um, a lot of pain. And, and it is a lot of work to harvest it. And thankfully I had a lot of help. She gets really great honey. It's dark, it tastes good. It's pretty good honey. It's better than honey than you'd buy at the store. I usually give it away, but I don't just give it away to anybody. So if you get some honey, I must really like you. <laughs> yeah, it got all the honey collected and jarred up and it's a good time. We're all very sticky today. Evening time is a great time for fishing. It's cool outside, it's peaceful. And so every once in a while, we decide to go out to the lake, bring the boat and go catch some fish. <laughs> So we've had this little boat for like well, as long as I can remember. This is a rusty old V bottom boat. It's been down at the barn for like forever. I thought we were getting a new bath boat. No, we're getting that for just putting out the jug on it. That rinkety thing? That's gonna sink if we all sit in it. Let me get it out of here first. I think this is the boat that George Washington crossed the whatever thing on Delaware. Christmas. That's a big ant hill over there. Yeah. Oh, the ants are in the boat. The little boat, we just have it down at the barn and we don't have a trailer for it. Just hooking on a row for a strap, dragging it across the soft grass isn't going to hurt that old aluminum bottom boat. Can I sit in it while you drag it? Well, I wanted to ride in it because that sounds fun. And he told me no because he didn't want to dent it or break the rope. One of my rules is don't do stupid stuff. Rope snaps, pop somebody in the face. I don't think my weight would break the rope. Just not worth it. Apparently I'm too heavy to sit back there anyways because the rope would snap, so. I'll get over it and I won't take it personally. You want 
flip it over and bang on it a couple times to get the ants off. Hey, hey, don't get that in. Get off that. I sure wouldn't want to dent this thing. The boat is a dent. What do you mean don't dent? Did you look at that thing? You can't ruin this boat. It's resale value right now is probably like 70 bucks. Like it's, it ain't doing much. Grab the jug lines while you're there. Wait, dad, is that, what is that? Her strap. What if he gets back and you have to bait him up? Just sling him out there as far as you can. All right. Ben and I had spent the afternoon that day making what's called jug lines which is basically a little piece of PVC pipe with a pool noodle on it. And attached to the PVC pipe is a, a long string with the hook on the end of it. And you put a little perch, which is just a small fish, on that. You throw those out in the water and those just float out there. And you know you have a fish on because the PVC pipe will kind of turn up in the water and you'll see it start moving around. But when Ben went to throw the jug line out there, he like slung it. No, it does not. Oh, no, great. That's great. And the jug line goes this way, and the fish goes this way. Right off of there. My bad. Yeah, it's unbaited. It's instantly unbaited. What did you expect to happen when he threw it out there, though? I didn't expect him to sling the fish off. He just kind of slung it, and the bait kept flying off the hook. Where if he had more tossed it out of there, it would have stayed on. And my dad's like, Ben, don't do that again. Throw it a different way. Ben does the exact same thing, throws it again. <laughs> Jug line goes this way, fish goes this way. That didn't see it, that didn't see it. What the heck, am I hooking him wrong? It happened again. Did you not see it? I can't even skip a rock that good. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, I swear. Dad, Dad's on a need to know basis. <laughs> and he did not need to know that. <laughs> the fish stay on the hook. The, the bait been, fish. That. Oh, that's Ben's fault. That's a user error. Come to figure out like a week later, we had gotten the wrong hooks. Caleb, Caleb did me dirty, man. Got one. Look at Bob and this is the reason for the boat. Oh, Wait, Dad, we got one. another one. You gonna go check those? You want me to swim out there? No, use this with a paddle. Huh? Yeah. It's not going very far. So it sounds a lot like your life trajectory. <laughs> I cast about five times and don't have to finish, I'm done. <laughs> well, there we go. Go grab it real quick, Ben. Because I don't know if those are the right type of hooks to keep stuff on. There you go, Ben. You got him on there. Nice. What not you get on the hook, Ben? No, give him a kiss. Did you just kiss that fish? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to slice that much. Ben, I'm sorry. Ben was just not on his toes. Situational awareness, just everywhere. So I had to wake him up with a little fish grenade. That's on me, Ben. That was a dirty move, throwing the fish and then splashing me like that. Good times had. <laughs> baby, I'm gonna head back up. Uh, you gotta catch one with me, baby. That was a very proud moment for me. I um, reeled that bad boy in, ish. And he really wanted me to catch a fish. Did I want to catch a fish? Couldn't care less. But he really wanted me to catch a fish. Hey, baby, want... hold him like that. Come on. You got it. I don't want you got to, to for the video. He me. No, he won't fin you this way, baby. Yes, he will. They've done it before. Okay, well, then you hold him. So I had to act like I was super proud about it. Oh, yay, my fish. All right, baby, you got to grab him right by the lip like that. Right? Just be right there. Just squeeze right on that part, baby. There you go. Now hold him up to the camera. I can feel his tongue on my thumb. I don't like it. Get it. I don't want it. <laughs> Take it away. No, I'm not giving that thing a kiss. I'd rather have to kiss you. It was sweet. You gotta learn the way that your husband or wife shows you love, and that's the way he was showing me love. <laughs> we built a house to have all our kids and future grandkids and a place to play out away from busyness and world and great and be together. I think family has always been very, very important to us. My wife and my kids and we're all having fun doing stuff, no matter what it is. And family being together is what paradise is to us.